I grew up poor, which means I was never exposed to money. I wasn't exposed to anything around the world. I didn't even thought it was it was for people like us. At the point in 2019 that I was losing my job because that's when the actual realization that turned around my life, I had no savings and I was working in an investment company. I had no investments and I was helping people invest. Mm. And on top of that, I had debts. So when I posted a video about uh, why I don't quite recommend merry-go-round chamas, there quite a number of people that were mad, mad, yeah? Merry-go-round chamas do not make sense financially, but they do make sense socially. So the treasury bill now mm. and the treasury bond, this is money you loan the government for them to do their infrastructural projects, public budget projects, and then they pay us back after a particular set of time mm -hmm. with an interest. Now, the difference between bills and bonds, they are both the same thing in terms of like them being debt investments. And these are GAVA. Yes, we are loaning the government, but the bills are short term while bonds are long term. Long -term. Circles are primarily for credit facilities. Your dividend or your bonus comes as an added benefit. But if I was never planning to take a loan from a circle at any given point in time, I would not be in a circle for saving purposes. Mm. Because the interest, again, that you're getting from circle savings, it you could get better yes. elsewhere. So money market funds, yeah. break it down for us. Yeah. What is it? Sure. A uh, very good morning to you and a warm welcome to LNS Rebuilding Series. My name is Lynn Googie. One of the things that I'm loving about 2024 is that we are about to dis we are discussing so many things. We are discussing matters, love, marriages. We are talking about finances. And as you've guessed by the coming up, our conversation today is definitely about finances. My guest today is very so outspoken about Chamas and she says whether you guys like it or not, Chamas and not helping you right now and before we even started you know rolling she said something important getting money is not the issue retaining that money and yani having money in your hands uh, and retaining that money and knowing what is my money doing for me is actually the concern uh, she will be talking to us about where we can be able to invest and why her views on chama are the way they are and i'm about to let her introduce herself but before i do that i want to say thank you you so much to our partners at tap tap yeah the conversation is about money so if you're watching this from diaspora and you want to send money to your loved ones back at home why don't you try tap tap send money to your loved ones here through mpesa or bank accounts uh, through that app very uh, fast reliable and you can be able to get 10 percent cash back if you use my promo code my promo code lean on your first hour of transaction and also to remind our community in australia we are coming so guys thank you for the stories you're submitting already they are so beautiful so impactful i can't wait to be in australia with my beautiful team and cover these beautiful stories for you guys and also for subscribing you guys are the real mvps thank you my people at lnn community for subscribing we are heading to 1 million subscribers i do not take that for granted i appreciate you for being active participants of our work and now without further ado please allow me to let my beautiful guest introduce herself hi good morning hi it's not even we are doing this in the <laughs> afternoon <laughs> yeah it's noon <laughs> yes good afternoon how are you i'm good how are you good good yes very good. very fine very excited to be here okay good yeah because i was about to ask you mm -hmm. one of the things people say on the show when i ask them is yeah. i'm good uh -huh. but really are you are good? you so you you're excited <laughs> i'm I very see. excited and, and i'm happy to? to be here welcome yeah. to and thank you for wanting to have this conversation with me but before we even go any further could you please introduce yourself 
Oh, I usually struggle with introducing myself a lot, but I'll try. My name is um, Susan Wanjiko. Yeah. I am the founder of a company called The Legacy Hub Kenya. It is a coaching center, an online coaching center. So we focus on all things personal finance, uh, business coaching, and life coaching. Uh, by background, I'm a trained finance person. So I especially um, I'm in the investment space as a certified investments and financial analyst. On top of that, I'm a certified life coach and also a person finance coach and i'm very happy to be Aww, here that's quite an introduction yeah. you know it's beautiful let me ask you when you, when we talk about money mm -hmm. when did you come to the realization that money 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 is like money matters yeah Mine is a very long story, Lynn. I and I've talked about it even on my channel, and I feel like now that I think about it in retrospect, I really thank God about my childhood. Mm -hmm. I didn't pick it up until much later, but I feel like my childhood really contributed to my views about money mm -hmm. and what I've been able to do. So I grew up poor, like very poor. I know poor is relative, but I grew up very poor. Yeah, um, I am the daughter of a shopkeeper. My mother had a shop for the longest time uh, since I could remember. So up until like when I was in class four, I was selling. Like my mom would go to Shags for the weekend and stay there from like Friday to Sunday. Mm -hmm. And I'll run the shop. I'll use I will know how to account for what was our profit. And to Nalipam, to Maziwa Kesho, how much? Yes. Um, and all that. So that's that was my childhood, mm -hmm. right? So, um, and then of course, like I, I, I know what it is to lack. So I've been the girl who... Like when people were of course, I knew I'm, I'm definitely going to be on the list. Mm -hmm. Like it was obvious, right? So I grew up poor, which means I was never exposed to money. I wasn't exposed to anything around the world. I didn't even thought it was it was for people like us, right? Um, so, but then I was really smart in school, like super smart. I'm mm -hmm. an A student. Oh, I'm yeah. usually very proud saying that Good. because it is against all odds. Yeah. So um, I was like, I performed very well in primary school. So I went to Pangani Girls. Um, and then, of course, when I got there, for me, it was like, I know all of these kids have all this money, but I don't have money. The only thing that I can bank on is my brains. So I also worked really hard in school. Um, and then, of course, after Pangani, I went to uni mm -hmm. and I did my Bachelor of Economics and Finance. Yeah. Where? Uh, um, in KU. In KU. Mm -hmm. So the plan, though, however, was to go to Strathmore University uh, to do financial economics there. Again, because of the little exposure I had, all I knew was Kuza, Duka, Pesa, ETC. So as much as my A would have gotten me maybe into engineering, med school, whatever, I was just exposed to, I just wanted, in my mind, in my own traumas, finances was like the only course I wanted to do because it was the only thing I was exposed to. But then also I felt like it was my way out of poverty. Good. You know? Can we talk about that? So yeah. it digress, but we'll pick it up yeah. to you going, yeah. wanting to go to Strathmore mm. and ending up at KU. Mm. But this is something that so many people experience. Yeah. Because of the background that you're in, you go for what's available, right? And what you're exposed and to. And what you're exposed to. I remember when I was, cause when I finished uh, primary school, I was supposed to go uh, to Kenya High. Mm. And I got called to Kenya High, but then I couldn't go to Kenya High because the finances. Thank you. So I ended up, but I loved that school mm. though because I think it molded me in a different way. Yeah. But I ended up in this school in Kinango, Magum mm. School. But mm. I'm here with a letter for Kenya High. Imagine. I'm being called in all this school, but because of there's finance. not that literacy around bursaries, you can do this, you can even go to, you don't know these mm. things. So whatever comes is you what you take. Yeah, huh. yeah. And, and, and that was it for me. I mean, for me, it, I even had a scholarship so let me explain to you what I mean by poor. Yeah. So like there was this arrangement for like you apply and then like you get like sponsorship, not full, but like 70, I think it was either 60 or 70% mm -hmm. of your fee would be paid. And then now you do the, uh, because you're an A student, yeah. we could not raise the 40%. That's how bad things were, right? So again, what do you do? You you're just like I think I had that conversation with my dad once. I picked up that 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 wasn't an option, and he made it very clear. Um, I'm not paying parallel. I cannot afford parallel. I can't. So like it was just you know what, Kiloto uh, University uh, Ufanye, there's help uh, the loan. So that's what we can survive on. So I I went through school. Um, 
with help, right? Help was paying my school fees. Help was paying my upkeep. Help was feeding me. So from the now from uni is where money management started becoming a thing. It wasn't because I'm so smart, I want to do it. It was if I don't do it, I'll sleep hungry. <laughs> so it's necessity, right? So a lot of people ask me, oh, but coach, you're so, so. Most of my followers will just call me Coach Susan. Mm. So they're like, but why are you? You're such a natural at budgeting. For me, I, I had to learn how to survive with. If this week I have 500 bob only. And I know even if I call home, there is no one who will send me even an additional 50. Yes. I must learn how to organize and plan for that money to be enough until the next time I'm getting money. Mm. When my help comes in, there's the 4,000 that was being sent directly to school. But even whatever hit my account, I had to organize parents, top up the rest of the school fees. Remember, it was taking care of everything. And still, whatever remains, I have to figure out if I don't get any money from home, how am I surviving the whole semester? Yes you get so for me money management had like from ku i had to just learn like it it was either that or you're not gonna survive mm. or now i was gonna start doing what most yes. uh girls from poor families unfortunately have to do in uni to have money to eat mm. move around and stuff like that yeah. um so that's where my relationship with money started but now when the actual realization came was when fast forward years later i've graduated i've gotten a job i work in an investment firm i've been there four years um so you're exposed and this is one of the things i talk to people a lot about because most of my clients, some of my clients, when I started, I never used to think it's true, but I work with a lot of people who work in high level management, even in banks and financial institutions. So you want to assume, Lynn, you work in a bank um, or you work in an investment company. Obviously, that person has savings investments. You want to assume yes. that they do. Yes. Four years later, after working in investments, being exposed to how rich people handle their money how they think about money we were helping people build investment portfolios at the point in 2019 that i was losing my job because that's when the actual realization that turned around my life i had no savings and i was working in an investment company i had no investments and i was helping people invest mm. and on top of that i had debts so you've, you've worked for four years where you've been exposed to money, investing, saving, and you do it so well, you understand the, 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 the theory of it and you can even do it for other people. But then now when it came to me applying it to my finances, hmm. it, it, didn't, it didn't happen. So in 2019, I walk into work on a normal Tuesday. Meetings, meetings as per usual, just the normal drill. And then at around, maybe after lunch, we were told, you know, there's some departmental meetings. That wasn't unusual. Emergency meetings, departmental meetings, those ones were not unusual. So, and then I realized, I entered the room and I realized I'm, I'm by myself. So like, it's like people were being called individually. So of course the people they had already decided they were letting go of, right? So it was, I, I, I don't even think it was 30 minutes long. <laughs> so this, the company is going through restructuring, financial issues. Uh, we are sorry, we are letting you go. So I entered into an, a work, a normal Tuesday as an employee. And by 5 p.m. when I was going back home, Lynn, I did not even have the access card. I'd already handed over the laptop and all company assets. Like it's your life changes in less than 12 hours. 12 hours. But I could grace period. Hey, yeah. friend. Yes, we were given, like we were told you'll be given two months pay mm. to organize yourself. Yes. But let me tell you, Mbele and Yuma, that is all I had. So you're trying to, in that moment, I'm trying to figure out, I've been here four years. And the news that my job is ending has me so traumatized and frustrated. Mm -hmm. The first person I called was my mom. <laughs> I'm like, and my mom also got into shock because, you know, at that time I was also supporting her. So it, it was very, it was, I look back and that was one of the most devastating moments in my life. And I've actually gone through very, many devastating moments in my personal life but that one the the risk that you feel like in two months time if i do not get a job i don't know how we will make rent i don't know how we will eat and i do not have a backup somewhere that i can lean on that's mm -hmm. the day i understood what an emergency fund is no one will ever explain to me any further why i need an emergency fund why it is important why it's a priority i saw it you know, so that was 2019, but now 
more and more Kenyans were coming to see that yeah. in 2020 when COVID, COVID came, came and we had never conceptualized the whole aspect of a global pandemic. It was all fun and games in movies until, <laughs> until you know, so people start going home and all that. So that's when I, I, I sat and thought you can work for the best company. And that's why earlier on today I was telling you, I don't think making money is our biggest problem. We say it is, but I was making money for four years. What did I have to show for it? I was exposed to investments and savings. What did I have to show for it? Nothing. Mm. Yeah. Retaining it. Retaining. I, I didn't retain anything. I was living paycheck to paycheck. A lot of it has to do with um, generational poverty. Again, as I told you, I come from a background of poverty. So what I found myself in was the usual cycle that I think most graduates or just firstborns or, and, and that's the reality. I like to talk about the reality. We're not just saying people are not saving because they don't want to save. It's not that I was wasteful. It's just that I found myself in that vicious cycle that people find themselves in. You get a job and the first thing you want to do is improve something in your life or in your family's life, in your home. In your home. In your so I grew up in a single a single room so imagine when that girl gets a, a job her first mind, mindset is I, I would give anything to have a shower inside the house yes. to not share the shower with everyone in our plot mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know or the, or, or the toilets and my god let's not even talk For about when you're on toilet. your period oh, oh my god and then to make it worse <laughs> it's so bad oh it god. is let me tell you like if you've never experienced that level of poverty, you wouldn't understand. So like my first um, nini wasn't, oh, I've gotten money. Let me start saving. It's we are moving out of this place tomorrow. Because <laughs> for me, that was dignity. I wasn't, I wasn't drinking. I wasn't partying that money. I was trying to get some dignity. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. But then you, when you're not careful, you just continue doing that. Your black tax, black tax, show, show, mother, brother, everyone. Uncle. You're taking care of everyone. Apart from yourself. And that's why money psychology is so important. I read somewhere, there's a book I read that changed the way I think about money. And I've read many personal finance books, but this is the one that just changed everything. It's called The Psychology of Money by Morgan Housel. Mm -hmm. Um, as you keep reading the book, you start realizing that head knowledge contributes to just 20% of your success with money. Like in other words, I mean, Lynn, so you know you should save and invest. Yes. That's head knowledge. Mm -hmm. You know you should avoid bad debt, mm -hmm. right? That's head knowledge. You know you should have uh, an emergency fund. That's head knowledge. Yes. And in the day and age where now we have uh, Instagram, YouTube, people who are talking about personal finance, our generation has that head knowledge. So why are we not doing what we know in our heads? We should be doing. We should be doing. It's because that only contributes to 20% of your success. Mm. Where is the rest of the 80? Your money psychology. Now, what's your money psychology? I call it money EQ. Money EQ is the emotions you feel when you think about money, how your mind makes financial decisions on autopilot. So you see for me, because of poverty and past trauma, on autopilot, my mindset is this money is to get me out of this place. It's for dignity. Whoa. You understand? Yes. Yeah. It is your money behavior, how you behave when you have money, how you behave when you have little money. Observe yourself, even, even me, I'm not immune to it. There's how even my swag changes on, a, on a high income even man. The walking style. <laughs> <laughs> Maze, let me tell you, Java all of a sudden is not giving. <laughs> I'm just like, na squeeze my ribu quality. You know, but on a, this nini is not tasty. Yeah, like this place I used to do my nails now, mm -hmm. it's they're not even using good products. They are ruining my nails. Hey. You know, that's how we behave when we have money. Thank you. You know, so all that, if you do not master your money psychology, why you behave with money the way you do, why you think about money the way you think about, why you react to money the way you do. If yes. you don't heal that, and you see you can't heal what you're not aware mm -hmm. of, mm -hmm. you get. Mm -hmm. So if you don't deal with that, it doesn't matter how many times people tell you save lean, invest lean. So like for me, I had to, and, and I, I, I'm not mad that yeah. those four years I didn't save or invest. However, I saw the damage. 
right? But then it wasn't because I was partying, living my best life. It was, I just got into that rat for black tax, right? And black tax is very emotional. It's not logical. Mm -hmm. So a lot of, when I talk about black tax, a lot of people tell me, oh, you, you're privileged. That's why I'm like, mm-mm. You're getting this information from someone who has never been privileged a day in her life. So when I tell you that you need to find a balance with black tax, it's because you cannot help people when you can't help yourself. At the point I lost my job, I put my mom, my brother, and everyone else was depending on me at risk. Period. Yeah. So it's not a priority for me to support them more than it is for me to save. Yes. You understand? It's tough. It's like you're in between a rock and a hard place. But if you don't figure that out early enough, you will do black tax, black tax, black tax. So you'll never save, save, save. And then the day you lose your job or the day something happens to your ability to make an income, you're not going to be the only one who's affected. Even them, they're going to be affected. Good. Powerful. You understand? I get it. So there has to be a balance. Mm -hmm. We are not saying don't pay black tax. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes the situation demands, but all your money can go there. Is this a case of Jijenge Kwanza? Yes. Or, or again, which is why I'm passionate about budgeting. When I show you my budget, I'm going to send you a copy. I, I have a done for you templates that I share with my clients. Hmm. It has everything. It has savings. It has investments. It has your bills. And it also has black tax for people who have black tax. We don't ignore those things it even has entertainment luxury shopping social giving like michangos it has because i always tell people budgeting is just about asking yourself i made twenty thousand this month or i made two million this month budgeting is asking yourself what would i want this money to do for me mm. You get. So budgeting, a lot of us have been taught it's restrictive, it's hard, it's you won't, en eh, you won't enjoy your money. But like when you do it well, everything that you, you deem important will get a little bit of money. Right? So if I always say if you're not saving for things like, for example, like how I was not saving for an emergency fund, I was left pretty much, for lack of a better word, naked, mm. vulnerable. Like had God not come through and me being resourceful, very soon people would have just started talking about the Susan who used to work in an investment firm that wamefungiwa yeah. nyumba sasa. Yeah. That's how vulnerable you leave yourself. Yeah. So like if you don't have an emergency fund, you, you're literally one emergency away from a financial crisis. True story. One. Just one. Yeah. So you know, you, you, you're in this place where no work, debts, two months salary, then figure it out. Yeah. How do you come out of that? That's how, that's, that's the foundation of the Legacy Hub Kenya today. So of course, because I'm a lady, I don't know how guys deal. Mm. I took like two or three months <laughs> to cry <laughs> and just yani lens i don't think i can explain to you the shock like you enter into an actual shock your body is in shock and i think even people who've experienced it can 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 tell you yeah. it's it's just it's it's a it's a shock i yeah? so um that's around september 2019 so I took some two to three months. I was I was um, crying, wallowing, hating life, hating God. And I'm a Christian. So God had a big part to play in my anger. Because I was like, Yanni, me have gone through hell. And then now that my life is starting to look up just a little bit, a semblance of some stability, you you take this job away from me. Mm. Like, can are you even making sense to yourself? You know, um, but then the beauty about being a grounded person, um, you eventually, and, and which is why I always say, I think when people hear about grief, they think grief is just um, when you lose someone. Someone passes on. You need to take time to grieve job losses. You need to take time to grieve um, even relationship losses. What You're the expert mm -hmm. in with your guests yes. on that. But grief is important because it helps you process, it helps you release. Because once... I was able to just deal like I had two months. They paid me an advance of two months. So I knew I need to figure myself out until December. And because mm -hmm. now I no longer had fair lunch and whatnot. 
I just sat and planned for a way for that money to last me till December. Mm-hmm. Just that two months pay to last me for three months. So the most important thing was paying rent, which I paid in advance just in case I touch that money for one yeah. reason or the other. Mm-hmm. Um, around that time now I started, there was a neighbor who used to live next to my mom, a guy. And he used to just stay home. Since to her, Miyoko, that guy was always in the house. So I kept wondering what he does for a living. Because <laughs> you're always in the house, but I can see like you. And he even used to have parties and whatnot. So one day I went and asked him, I do online writing. So he's like, ah, that's very interesting. So how does it work? So he kind of like told me, oh, these are the ropes. You you know, there are people who want their th- thesis done or papers done or whatever. That's when I got exposed, like around November, December there mm-hmm. to online, the online writing space. So, and this is now where I feel I did something right. Okay. Because I quickly pivoted. Mm. My CIFA certificate, Kando. A Bachelor of Economics and Finance, Kando. Pride and oh me, I'm a graduate, all of that. Kando. Yeah. My bills didn't care that I didn't have a job. But effective January I needed to figure out how life will continue will, will continue. continue. So I, I asked him, would you mind teaching me? I had a laptop at home and of course for most houses there's probably Wi Fi or bundles. <laughs> and I just started learning. Now one of the things I'm I'm gifted in creative but in a particular way, communicate communications and creativity we can tell yeah <laughs> so i'm a very good speaker yes orator but i'm also a very good writer okay but i used to write for fun now it was like hey where i couldn't find up as let yes. me let me start learning so one day you're getting a paper for russian war the other day you're getting a paper as a nurse needs to write three pages of what i learned so many subjects so and i was getting the lady who he connected me to the lady who used to give him a job mm-hmm. and she would pay me 200 bob per page mm-hmm. so yangu. If I write 200, uh, three pages, I get 600 that day. If I write five pages, you get your 1K. I get my 1K a day. And imagine that is how I survived. So because of that, now getting exposed to the online space and whatnot, I started knowing, ah, people do things like transcribing. So you were telling me earlier on about like the online gig mm-hmm. economy and mm-hmm. how people now are doing online yes. jobs. That saved me. But you see, I didn't start saying I don't know how to. I didn't have the luxury lean of not knowing how to. <sighs> you get like I, I had to like teach me, teach me how to do this thing because like my bills again didn't didn't care. So thankfully, um, I when I was employed, I used to earn forty thousand gross. When I started this hustle, the first month I think I made around seven thousand. Um, then we were living in a house that costed 10000 mm. for rent. It was mm. a one-bedroom in Zima, man. I, I grew up in Zima, for oh. the guys who know Zima. Yes. Um, so, like, that's... You so were still with Akina mom? With my mom oh. and my younger brother. So, we were just kind of, like, all trying to chip in and all trying to survive. Like, I've made this much. Kila mtu alete kile, akonayo. And that's how we were making it, yeah? Um, by, by February, um, March there, I had upped that to 20000 25 what? sometimes just depending on how the good gigs. it is mm-hmm. yeah then covid so my plan was 2020 i was going to get a job obviously why i have years of experience i have papers um so i started applying for jobs so i'd get regrets 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 again no one talks about how devastating that is my younger brother right now is um he graduated and i've I've been very graceful with him, even in terms of supporting him, because I understand we apply for jobs, I think, for a living. Like, that's what we wake up to do for him every day and with him. But, like, we get as many regret emails as the applications, Mm -hmm. you know. And now he's also joined the gig economy. Now he's doing something called data annotation. I can't even tell you what that is, but he's earning good, (laughs) you know, from it. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and that's a reality in Kenya. Again, we can't talk about personal finance and money management without talking about the systematic issues. So poverty, the fact that there are no jobs. So sometimes I see young people making excuses. Um, Susan, these savings you're telling us, where will we get money for saving? Mm-hmm. And I keep telling people that the day I learned that 
wealth is a three step process and you can't skip any of these three steps i i said i'm no longer gonna complain i'm just gonna figure out how to get the three steps done it's uh simple but it's not easy so wealth creation is done in three steps make money keep money then multiply money everyone who has ever become wealthy is just because they did those three things <laughs> they figured out a way to make money when they started making money they didn't spend all the money they were making they kept some of it yes and because you cannot save your way to wealth you multiply you multiply which is where investing comes in mm. so when someone is like coach i cannot save i don't have an income i'm like then you're solving the wrong problem at that moment in 2020 i couldn't save and i couldn't invest and that's the reality for most people you can't save and you can't invest because you don't have the money to 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 do that so pause it's okay it's okay it's okay for you to not save and invest as long as you do not have an income the problem is you have an income but you're not saving you get but if you don't have an income so my focus at that point was i need to first of all bring in some yes some income and that is why i was just like i have an internet connection i have a laptop i have a phone right and this is one of the reasons again i always say you don't have an excuse mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. if you have those three things at your yeah. disposal at least a phone an internet connection and a laptop um we live in a generation of tea you know that so um <laughs> what's our bundles for so that's what our bundles are for we know who's sleeping with who we know who divorced who, who. What? we know, you literally like spend over 8 hours 6 to 8 hours on social media every day some of us are so addicted to our phones we can't keep them down now while you're trolling and arguing and insulting people on social media there are people who are making millions on that same social media and that's just the reality mm-hmm. so what are you going to use your bundles for is what i ask i love talking to young people i'm 29 i'm going to be turning 30 Aww. in july welcome <laughs> <laughs> third flow uh-huh. um it's beautiful yeah it's mm-hmm. i mean i'm i'm excited yeah. and 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 for me that's that's how i mean i just started exposing myself so on in 2020 people are online they are putting they're making banana bread i mean we were all online because yes. what else can you do then when i'm there i start seeing all these businesses like especially people in the states and in canada that are doing on people are doing online um so i had that head knowledge but the trigger moment was actually one sunday um someone in my family had a group of people in a chama who were like we have this money we've been contributing um and we'd like someone to train us uh on where we can invest the money so she um he came and asked me okay um can can you train them i was like yeah i mean i hadn't thought of it as an income source then mm-hmm. but so let's say ana fanya kazi kwa investments eh then i was still so ashamed i hadn't even told people that i lost my job um because there's a shame that comes with losing your job that people don't talk about so i was just like if someone finds out they find out but i'm not going to be advertising out here mm-hmm. that i've lost my job so they're like yeah um let me train them so sunday afternoon after church i go in they had a place there um around ridgeways where they were meeting as the group of the chama so they were not so the chamas i am against at the merry go round the mm-hmm. one that you know we'll talk about that um but this was a group that was putting money in a money market fund so they wanted to know if they wanted to grow and multiply that money get better returns where they could do now that's my bread and butter i enjoy such conversations so lin i trained um i trained and trained and trained my life out of that uh, two hour session it wasn't supposed to be for money it was just a favor to my family member mm-hmm. um and then the event ends and this guy comes with an envelope oh. imagine my shock i open the envelope later when i get home and it's 10000 as like mko serious mmeni lipia hiyo information like that wasn't obvious you don't know treasury bonds you're sure you people did not know about bills and you know all the options i gave them so that moment when i get when i got paid for that is when the idea of coaching came to me mm-hmm. I was like you're serious people want to pay for this information i didn't then i did not think that people would want to pay for that information i thought it was googleable i thought mm. it was obvious mm. um 
and to cut the long story short that's how i got the idea that i can start coaching people yes. so you have this certificate but then you realize that people don't know about investment options um that are kenyan so people don't know the options that are available for investing right so i got the idea and then because i did not just want to be like staying at home and doing nothing since everyone is on social media yeah. i said on fridays i'm going to be doing a short clip then instagram had igtv right it wasn't real yes. so i started doing short 5 minutes videos to tell people hi guys my name is susan today i want to talk to you guys about how you can choose a bank or how you consider like a lending partner why should you consider maybe circles as opposed to like high interest banking services just things that i thought were yes normal or mm. common sense right so again when you do something so much you assume that because it's common sense to you it's common sense to everyone. everyone and this is one of the things i tell my clients it's very easy to start a business um easier said than done yes but like if you can identify a gap and there's someone who's not addressing these things or not talking about it because i'm telling you my page grew like wildfire like there's a video i did on money market funds another one i did on treasury bills and bonds and like i just realized that people are not they are quite surprised and impressed and they are interested in more so i just started creating more wow. um content mm -hmm. around that and you know that's how the business started mm. um and my business changed my life because now i make way more <laughs> than i could ever have imagined as someone who was employed where yes. i was right so it's 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 very interesting when you think about like the opportunities i've always said when you find yourself in a financial fix and you know that some of us have um an income problem and some have a spending problem and it's very important for you to figure out what's wrong with your finances then what i had was honestly an income problem mm as much as mm, i wasn't yeah I, love that. Mm. i wasn't spending on i've never even been a frivolous fr frivolous person mm. so like i was pretty much just paying bills and the money ends mm -hmm. so if all you do is pay bills 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 there's no luxury anywhere there's no wastage there's no partying there's no entertainment and you've just paid for needs and the money ends you mm -hmm. don't have a saving problem yeah you have an income problem you have an income problem so you need to figure out you need to solve that first yes cuz i'm telling you the moment money started coming in from my business i paid off debt um so when you have money problems you first of all need to figure out like what you, what the issue is do you have an income problem or a spending problem yeah. so how do you differentiate if you're just paying bills and needs like mandatory needs and expenses like in other words these things you see whether i have a job or not rent must be paid right food food utilities if you have a child um you know there are things that must absolutely be paid for mm -hmm. so if there are no luxuries anywhere in your spending and you're sure you're not lying to yourself truly you're not spending on luxuries then you have an income problem yeah. that person will spend their entire life trying to think they are bad savers bad investors but or life really is not moving or life is not like moving mm. and and which is one of the reasons i always say like figure out what the problem is because you might be thinking you have a saving problem or you're just a bad spender or you're bad with money especially like for us women we just generally just conclude we are bad with money but you're not bad with money maybe you just have a an income problem yes. for me that's what i had because when i started uh when i you know went to coaching school for six months and got my certificate because I, i i i saw an opportunity and mm -hmm. i was like if i do it right if i don't run this business like a kiosk you know if i take this thing seriously it has potential identify a gap Thank and you. then professionally Pro yeah provide a solution yes. for it right so it's like susan you have the training even if it's not 10 years worth of experience you have 4 years worth of experience working in an investment firm mm -hmm. and that's another thing with uh, again i i see a lot with my female clients imposter syndrome can i tell you something interesting i learned yes a babe will see a job description and she has met 80% of the requirements of that job description and maybe it's just one thing she doesn't have 
uh, maybe they want 10 years worth of yeah. experience and mm -hmm. you just have six or you have everything on that list other than the master's degree you know most of us will not apply for that job true story but a guy will go they will have 40 percent or even 35 <laughs> and apply could you you know could you say so, in, imposter syndrome is something I've had to deal with and I deal with every day because like for me the risks I faced were people saying she's too young what does she know because I started my business when I was 25 right what does she know about life experience about money that she can tell me what to do with my money where to invest etc right um and so for me I I, I just decided you know what the people who will vibe with me and the people who need this service, the yes. people who are interested in learning about budgeting, they will come, right? And which is one of the reasons why when I started, um, again, why I took a coaching certification, again, it was online. Lynn, if I, if I had uh, a microphone that every person in the world would hear if I spoke, I would say we are living in the digital age right now. If you do not take advantage, if you don't jump on the wagon, you are really sleeping on yourself. Mm -hmm. Because now everything, like the coaching certificate I did was online. Yeah. The uh, life coaching certificate, I have three certificates. I have a business coaching certificate, a life coaching certificate, and a personal finance coaching certificate. All of those I did online. Of course, actually, my degree is the only thing I did in actual school. And they are actual certificates. They are accredited certificates. I was doing in my house during COVID. Hmm. You understand? Yes. So upskilling is something I've always like. It's not always about going back to school. And I, I love that you can do a master's in whichever big university. But what if you're like me, who you don't have parents who can pay an MBA for you. You don't have a job. So you cannot save to do that MBA. You take advantage of these resources, courses that are like $90, $100, something you can work with. If you hustle, hustle here and there. You can be you able can, to get that. Yeah. And that's what taught me everything I know now about creating coaching packages, uh, creating even content for yes. business purposes mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah. So when I solved that income problem, things started making sense. I got out of debt. I paid off my debt. I started an emergency fund. Now I have an mm. emergency fund that can last me nine months in Nairobi. So if anything were to happen today to me, which means my ability to make an income or I lose my business, at my current standard of living, Lynn, I'll not move my home. I will not park my car. I will not, um, like I will retain my standard of living for nine months yeah. with what I've saved in an emergency fund mm -hmm. now. So we always recommend if you're employed, work with at up to six months worth of living expenses. But if you're in business, and especially if your business is dependent on, on you. you, you want to have at least one year worth. Mm -hmm. So you see, I'm not even there. Even as I sit here, I've not yet hit the one year mark. mark. But I've worked my way through nine, nine months. months. You know why? Because I can be admitted today in hospital who is coaching if Coach Susan is admitted? True story. Then who is hosting this show? Yeah, who's hosting this show when Lynn is not, is unwell? Will your bills, your bills will still, mm -hmm. will your rent still require mm -hmm. to be paid? Mm -hmm. If you're servicing some loans, yes. will you still need to pay for them? Mm. Damn, that's, that's so powerful. So let me pick it up because I love handling things in a layman's language because mm. I know a lot of people really want to know these things, you know. We hear first things first. What's wrong with Chama, Susan? Mm. Okay, let's talk about Chama's merry-go-round Chama. Yes. So there's nothing wrong with Chama's, but there's something wrong with merry-go-round Chama's. And I'll tell you why. Now, it's not just Chama's. Let's generalize and say you need to be careful where you're putting your money now. Why now? Because now our biggest issue in our economy, and not just in the Kenyan economy, but in many other economies, is um, inflation. So most of us know how inflation affects us as consumers. But we don't know how inflation mm -hmm. affects us as savers and investors so let's break it down as a consumer if you go to supermarket and you're buying your unga you're buying your mchele you realize the price has gone up 
at that moment you feel in inflation right when you're going to fuel your car you feel inflation why because it's 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 tangible it is that i used to buy rice at 450 now i'm buying at 550 mm-hmm that 5kg one maybe you can feel it you can feel it it's yes. immediate when at afueli pande na one bob at ikipanda na two bob you you yes. feel it yes. but then you see there is another um effect of inflation that is not felt directly mm-hmm. and that is what inflation does uh, to your money so i want us to have person a person b and person c okay okay Person A normally puts their money let me group uh, group A they put uh, yani where they save primarily I'm talking I'm not talking about the kidogo money I'm talking primarily all your majority of your savings are either in a traditional bank account or in a chama right like the merry go round or in chama. a sako or even um yeah let's even say even in a sako mm. so but sakos at least they they're different but let's okay. just say traditional bank accounts and maybe chama okay. now a traditional bank account will not give you interest if it's a current bank account Okay? If it is a fixed deposit account it will give you maybe 5 6 7% if you're lucky depending on again with banks it's about negotiation mm-hmm. power. Mm-hmm. So if you have more money you can always negotiate a higher return. If you just are a common wananchi trying to save your 5k here 10k there you'll get what the market rate is which is like 6 7%, okay? okay? Um person B here maybe primarily puts their money or saves their money or invests their money in a money market fund. Money markets currently in Kenya will give you an upwards of 9.5 10 11 12% okay. Okay. right and then we have like a person C who's very woke person C likes taking advantage of like treasury bills for example either 90 day bill 182 day bill 364 We won't get into the jargon but mm-hmm. let's just uh, measure now mm-hmm. all of these people are saving they've all decided where they want to primarily be saving their money there is inflation in Kenya currently at around give or take 8% per annum what does that mean as a consumer it means that the prices of goods services and commodities are expected to go up by 8% this year that's what it means mm. so i want you to think of anything you buy or purchase or you spend on mm. vastly Yeah. It may actually be inflated by yeah. 8%. But now your savings, okay, will um what it means for your money or for your savings, it means that the value they can get you. In other words, the purchasing power of your money will depreciate by 8%. Percent. So let's talk about Wanjiko Susan here who primarily yeah na ugopa ku ku save na ku invest because watu ni scammers. So yeah na kanga tu pesa kwa bank. bank. January to December. Hmm? Your money grew by 0% because it is a current, current bank account. Bank. The same way your money grows in Amerigo Round Chama. Is anyone giving you interest in Amerigo mm, Round Chama? Nope. No. So the value of your money has grown 0%. But inflation has grown by 8%. 8%. So my money and 0%, inflation grew by 8%. 8%. I am 8% poorer by December. I just don't know it. Because it's not as immediate as seen mafte mepanda na to bob mm. ama mchele imeongezeka na 50 bob but like what that money could have done for you in january has depreciated by 8% mm-hmm. in december mm. makes sense a lot yeah so let's t- even go to your fixed deposit account that gives you 6% 7% still your money grew by 7% but inflation grew by 8% still you've you've not even been compensated for giving them my money for inflation or even having them yeah because you know when you put money in a bank see they're gonna use it in fact I, i love to tell people your money in a bank is a liability to them you know why because it is money that they owe someone yeah what's an asset something you own yes what's a liability something, something. you owe so if my money is seated in a bank account because i feel it's safe mm. um for it to, for that liability to make sense to them they must put it to work yes. so what do they do they lend they lend that heck now even some unsecured loans are like 17 18% yeah. per annum yeah so they are making 18% on your money while you're making zero, zero. Huh. 
You understand? Yes. Yeah. So again, and it's the same thing even with your fixed deposit account. So I've always said, so where people ask me, coach, you tell us not to put money in all these places. I'm not saying don't put. I'm saying if you choose to put them there, I need you to do it with the awareness that you're barely getting compensated for what? For okay. inflation. So if I was to look for where to put my money, I'd ask myself in Kenya today, if I'm a Kenyan, I'm putting, I'm saving or investing in Kenya. What's the inflation rate in Kenya? 8%. You need someone who's giving you 9% upwards if you want your money to make sense mm. in the long run. So this year, your money depreciated by 8% in your banks and your merry-go-round chamas. Next year, let's say you've done it for three years. Another 8%. 8%. The third year, so 10%. in fact, I always tell people, Lynn, today you can give me 100,000 and I decide to put it because of fear or whatever reason I don't invest or save, um, I'll, I'll have 100,000. And then you'll take your 100,000 and put it maybe like right now, treasury bills are at 16% mm. per annum. So you primarily decide that this money, you'll just be putting it in a 91-day bill. You earn your money. You even reinvest it or you do even a one year. Susan. Please to see us you map a kilam to anaju a treasury bill. Please just take us pole pole. Bank we understand. I'm rambling. Bank we understand. Nini um chama we understand. Now treasury bill. Now I'm starting to talk about money markets and treasury bills. Eh, your funds are your. Break it down for us. What is it? Sure. So money market funds, in fact, are pretty much like your typical bank account. Only that most of them, in fact, nowadays banks have money market funds. Mm -hmm. You'll find um, there are some banks that have money market funds. Some insurance companies have money market funds. It's just an account like any other. You top up from as little, like I know there's one called Zimele. Um, I'm not promoting like any, but I'm mm. just, I'll mention hey, if you allow me. Us. Yeah, yeah. So I'm allowed? You're allowed. Okay. So Zimele Money Market Fund, for example, allow people to contribute as little as 100 bob in that money market fund. Mm -hmm. And that money market fund, to, I think today or yesterday as I checked, should be around 12.9% return. So is Zimele return. an account? Yeah, it's a it's, money market, it's a money fund. market so fund. So it's an asset management company. It's called Zimele. Okay. The same way you can have CIC, oh, okay. Jubilee, okay. NCBA. You see now, pole pole, Susan. Okay, <laughs> you get it? Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. So now you open those, uh, like that particular money market fund. ICA, for example, mm -hmm. 500 bob. That's the bare minimum starting point. A bank like Standard Chartered, they have a money market fund. I think it's called SC Shilingi Money Market Fund. You invest with as little as 1,000, Bob. So you can literally, there's something for everyone. Mm. For the person who can only uh, afford 100, Bob, and you can top up as many times as possible, yes. let's say like during the month. Mm -hmm. The difference between these money market funds and bank accounts is the interest like remember that the reason why we are saying where you put your money matters is because we are considering inflation mm -hmm. so what beats inflation a good interest rate and imagine your money is as safe in a money market fund as it is in a bank no the risks are e yes you know why your money is safe in a bank your money is safe in a bank because of cbk regulations that they should guarantee you capital preservation yes. in other words worst case scenario your capital should be intact now why is your money safe in a money market fund? Because CMA also has the same regulation on money market CBK, funds. CBK, we know CMA is Capital what? Markets Authority. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, CMA yes. regulates most investment funds, all right. right? If not all. Mm -hmm. um, so they also require that specifically money market funds guarantee you capital preservation. Okay. So it means that, again, even as interest rates fluctuate, your initial capital is there. Our should be Guzi. yeah should mm -hmm. be intact actually money market funds are like the lowest risk investment that you can do now i don't believe in any such thing as no risk chase bank for example right. was a bank like any other mm -hmm. like kcb like equity mm -hmm. they didn't they shut down they so for me i tell people there's no if you're looking for no risk just die and go to heaven <laughs> like there's nothing <laughs> under the sun that is no risk. I was serious. I was It's true. Mm -hmm. So it's either low risk, medium risk, or high risk. But there's no no risk at all. Atalio nikitoka kwangu nikikuja apa. There was a risk I can I won't make it. Yes, true. 
and and that's how I think. And and I always tell people, you see, if you're afraid of putting your money in these places, because you're, or rather, you're afraid of putting your money in these places because you you don't want to lose your money. Mm. I, I don't know if you guys have already picked it up. You are already losing money, money. to already, inflation. You are already losing money. Yeah. So, so mm-hmm. there's power in financial literacy. Ah, yeah. Turudi to kwa treasury. Yeah. So the treasury bill now mm. and the treasury bond mm. are what we call debt what's investments. A, what, what, what's the difference between a, a bill, bill and, and a bond? Yeah, I'm, go, I'm getting there. Okay, mama. So both of them are debt investments or what we call debt instruments. In other words, let me... Uh, give you a good example if i loaned you money today uh one million i told you uh, lena i'm gonna loan you this one million maybe you need it for whatever project you're working mm-hmm. on but i need you to pay me back with a 10 percent okay. interest mm-hmm. i've made money right yes. for me that's an investment because i've loaned you um one million but it's gonna come back as 1.1 yeah mm-hmm. because there's a 10 percent mm-hmm. uh, return so i've made money so that's also how people or rather the government makes money in treasury or rather how we make money off of the government in treasury bills and bonds so this is money you loan the government for them to do their infrastructural projects, public budget projects, and then they pay us back after a particular set of time mm-hmm. with an interest. Now, the difference between bills and bonds, they are both the same thing in terms of like them being debt investments. And is a GAVA. Yes, we are loaning the government, but the bills are short term while bonds are long term. You know what they didn't tell you? Yeah. You make a good teacher. <laughs> Thank Hi, you. Yeah. Bills are uh, short, short term, term and bonds, bonds are long, long term. term. So short term, actually, financially speaking, we just mean one year and below. Okay. Yeah. Mm. So you can invest in a 91-day treasury bill. Unaweka tu pesa yako for 91 days. That's pretty much three months. And then the money matures and you get it back. It's like your typical fixed deposit bank account, only that you're going to get a better interest yes. there in a treasury bill than like a bank. Does the interest vary? Or yes, it's, it actually varies. But we also call these assets fixed income assets. Mm-hmm. Because if you fix your money, let's say at the point you are investing, you are given an interest of uh, 17% or 16% per annum, you'll still get it. Okay. But maybe when now you're coming to reinvest again, maybe the second time it's the interest rate might start. 12%. Yeah, but it what might. they tell me from the word go is what they will give you. Exactly. Okay. So if if you invest in what we call the primary market, okay. yeah. So, like, if you if you yours is a fixed income, yeah. But most of them are right. So bonds, on the other hand, and I'm excited about. I love bonds for long term investing. Mm-hmm. So they are usually for long term investing. So when you put your money in a bond, what happens is that the government keeps that money for however long the bond was retailing for. So you mm-hmm. can get a four year bond, ten year bond, even a fifteen year bond right so you lock your money there and for those 15 years you'll be getting passive income or rather the interests are sent every six Mm -hmm. months okay wow now i know this is let me let me do some quick math for you lynn okay just the other day i was working with a client Mm -hmm. that needed um, a retirement plan for a dad who had worked all their life but they didn't have cash okay. at the point of retirement so th- we were going through a scenario where the guy was asset rich but cash poor and that's most of our african parents mm. wakona mashamba manyumba manyumba Kuna lakini aezi hata afford kulipa internet yes. yo mwezi ama kulipa mtu waku yeah. kata nini so that that was like um some I believe that should have been a year and a half ago, if not two years. Mm-hmm. So when we sat down, we looked at all the assets that the guy had. And he had quite a bit in Kitengela. I don't know what's up in Kitengela, but people have mashambas there. Yes. So when we liquidated, so they found an agent and because he had uh, land in a prime area. And thank God he had land in a prime area. Again. Um, because disposing, disposing always takes time, but it, yes. it didn't take so long. Mm-hmm. So by the time we were we were done uh, disposing what he had in terms of assets, we had nine point five million. Okay. So we took the nine point five million and put it in a bond, an infrastructural bond. Now the bond was around fourteen point nine percent. So I just let me do the numbers it's for okay. you, right? Yes. So zero point one four nine percent. The beauty about this infrastructural bond is that it is tax free. Other bonds are taxed, but the infrastructural bond 
is not so taxed is that any income nika ukilipa mshahara si una tax yangu eh. mm. so hata uki make income from an investment watakata eh, wana tax ah, ingi so bonds are also taxable yes, yes. but infrastructure it's tax, tax free, free. Yeah, exactly. Good. So we got out of the 9.5 million we mm. put it all in that uh, infrastructural bond it was an 18 year bond. Okay. The guy is 60. By the time he is um the bond is maturing 78. he'll just be 78 that's mm. not even an old person mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so 14.9% on 9.5 million that is an interest of how much 1. Point, no, no, 1.4. 1.4 million okay. every year but a bond every year every year because it's 14.9% per, per annum. annum see at you your water ni pay after 18 if, years uh, no. sorry scholar mm-hmm. <laughs> so that is 1.4 million yeah. but a bond pays you twice in a year every six months okay. so every six months this retiree will get how much 707,000. Remember the 9.5 is locked with the government. They will still, have to they give, will it still give it me. back after the period. But throughout that period, this retired man who now did not have he had land, he didn't have money to develop the land. He didn't have like he wasn't leasing the land, it was idle land seated there but he's broke why is he broke because of where he chose to put his money, money. now we just liquidated that as we converted it from idle land into a bond right 707 every six months now can we break that down to what that would translate to per month yes so if i divide that amount by six that's 117 thousand hey, almost 118 though every month, month. Can, is that su- some money a retiree can comfortably live off? Live off. Absolutely. Is that something that your dad, your mom, someone who's retired can So assuming I have my 9 million right now, <laughs> we can do that thing. Talk to me later. No. <laughs> Talk <laughs> to me later. I'm just saying um it's not just yeah. like for specific no, group no, of no, people. No. It's, it's a, bonds actually retail and now imagine that was 14.9. Now bonds are almost at like 18%, some are even at 19% depending on like the interest rates again. Yes. Now they are a bit more attractive cuz ah, government mm. needs money. It needs money. Exactly. You get. So this is this is why again Lynn, when why I do what I do is because while my mother was taught to buy land by land by land now that i have literacy i can help her i'm like mom you just need a retirement home one piece of land okay and maybe if you're emotional about it another that you can leave to your chief <laughs> to your children but at least not me let me not speak for people yes. um the most important thing is cash flow So you need your money working for you so that you can start generating what cash flow. So kama mazoea ni bank, kama mazoea ni merigoround chamas, kama mazoea ni non interest bearing avenues yes. to put your money, you will never know the concept of this passive income. You like you you're preventing yourself from learning and exploring how you can make your money work for you. Wealthy people don't work for money. Their money works for them. Mm. And that's what I learned but I was not practicing. Mm-hmm. I was working in an investment company and that's why the moment my business started giving me money, my top priority right now before nizai watoto nianze kulipa school fees and what and even if at kama unalipa school fees, like you need to even if it's just 10% mm-hmm. of your income. 10 out of whatever you earn. Just take 10% the same way um as Christians take 10% for tithe. Yes. And dedicate that to investing. Okay. Because as much as I understand these places help you with discipline like the merry go round and they help you with saving, right? But you can never save your way to wealth. You have to invest. And for you to properly invest, you have to invest somewhere where you're getting a return that is higher than the rate of inflation. Okay. I love that. Yeah. One thing uh, we are taking a uh, home from treasury bonds and bills it's that kuna tax pia mm. pahali mm. what are the hidden Actually, truths what most... are other hidden truths mm. in treasury bills and, and bonds, bonds that um, that people might I didn't know about tax. The tax. Actually all investments in Kenya are taxed mm-hmm. other than the infrastructural bond. Okay. So even your money market fund when you earn an interest 
it's taxed. When you're in a circle that pays you dividends, the dividends are taxed. When you own Safaricom shares and you get some dividends at the end of the they year, tax. yeah, they are taxed. So mm. tax is, um, there's no running away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there's no running away. Mm. Uh, what other things do you need to be aware of? I think with treasury bills and bonds, honestly, it's pretty straightforward. Um, because as long as you're investing it through directly through the CBK, we are not charged like management fees or any other hidden fees. Mm. But some people, because they don't know how to invest directly through the CBK, uh, let's say um, I bank with KCB and KCB comes tells me we can help you invest in bonds. So I use KCB as my broker to investing in these bonds. If that's the route you've taken, you will pay management fees mm. and uh, some professional service fee. some service fees. Mm. But if you learn how to do it directly, and now there's it's it's honestly everything is online. If you Google CBK, there's an app uh, on their on their homepage. It's yeah. called the Do CSD app. You just fill in the details, open your account, and you can directly start investing for yourself mm. uh, with bills and bonds. The bare minimum amount for treasury bills is a uh, hundred thousand. Um, and bonds and bonds is fifty thousand for a normal bond, mm. but a hundred thousand for an infrastructural okay. bond. So we are working with fifty two, a hundred thousand for mm. a start. You can go as high mm -hmm. as you want. Um, but then now this is the reason why I'm passionate about let's say money market funds, because before I ever bought my first bond, where did I start? A money market fund. I opened an account, I saved, saved, saved until it got to 100,000 and then I removed that 100,000 and then invested it now in a bill or mm. a bond. So you also have to find a way to accumulate slowly. I, I think the concept of haba na haba ujaza kebaba is very, very important. Mm. Most people are afraid of investing because you hear 100K, you're like, too much. that's not for me. But there's how to get to their 100K. Let's go back to, you know, because I'm saying I, I get the difference, mm. but people should not confuse mm. money market funds mm. and treasury bills, bills and, and bonds. bonds. Those two are, are different. So when we are talking about money market funds, mm. what are these money market funds? So money market funds about? are just uh, collective investment schemes. Yes. You say like what you do in a chama. Yeah. Like me, I have a chama, yeah. but it is not a merry-go-round chama. It's a chama where my besties and I from high school came together. We put money in a joint money market fund account. Um, so you don't have to do it in a joint manner. So like, for example, um, a money market fund, again, why I'm calling it a collective investment scheme, is that CIC Today or Jubilee or NCBA, they open a fund. Mm. They say you can contribute as little as a hundred bob, a thousand bob, five thousand. You put however much or however little that they require as a bare minimum. So as you're investing that money in that money market fund, that company is investing that money. In fact, money market funds primarily invest your money in treasury bills. Oh, yeah. Okay. And well negotiated for bank mm. deposits. So you see, I don't have fifty a uh, hundred thousand to invest in a bill. Yes. But I have five thousand every month I can spare. So where do I put that money? Mm. In a money, money market, market fund. Because either way, CIC or Sandlam or Jubilee will take that money, Lynn's money, mm. Joroga's money, everyone who's invested in that money market fund, mm -hmm. and then invest that money in a treasury bill or a well-negotiated for bank deposit, yes. and then make that return and pay us. Okay. A return. Good. Yeah. Let I actually yeah. have a video um, about it like on my channel, mm -hmm. like a crash course on like money market funds. So it's it's something that is very, it's readily, the, the information, like the people who are watching us right now, yeah. if you can just Google money market funds in Kenya, yeah. like you, there's, it's readily available information mm -hmm. on like where they are, how do you apply? Most yeah. of them, it's online. Yes. Most of them have mobile apps. So it's something that's very accessible. Okay. Mm. Circles. Hmm. I'll give myself as an example. Mm. Mimi, I left circle for one reason. Why? You know the way you wait for bonuses? <laughs> no. Mm. <laughs> they gave me a bonus of 16,000. 16. Can I check? Mm. Just to be sure. Yeah. It will it, be a heartbreak. I want you to use my example. I won't mention the name of the circle. Yeah. I did like, oh, it's a full year. Good. Mm -hmm. I'm excited for my bonus. Mm -hmm. Then you give me what? 
then I'm like, wait, what? So with circles, yeah. just to generalize, mm. where where do we go wrong or where do we go right? And what's, what are your honest views on mm. circles? Do you know why I had my eyes wide open? <laughs> I was looking at the interest that you're getting mm -hmm. and it was 5%. I don't know whether you've seen that. I actually, maybe I'm those Kenyans who, <laughs> now you see They've now. indicated there yes. that the interest they use is 5%. Mm -hmm. Sasa, sasa ata ungekuwa na yo pesa kwa MMF, ungepata how much? 11%, 12%. So kwa nini? Sako ya 5%. Yeah. You understand? Again, this brings me to the concept of why we do what we do. do. So when I posted a video about uh, why I don't quite recommend merry-go-round chamas, there are quite a number of people that were mad, mad, yeah? So just the other day, I um, posted on my Instagram and I told people, I'm genuinely interested in understanding why, even after knowing you're getting 0%, you're still defending why you still prefer to do mm. it. Something very interesting came up, yeah? Um, and, and I'm very cognizant of that. And I wanted people to actually arrive to that um, discovery also. That you are in a merry-go-round chama, for example, and most of them admitted for what they are calling social capital. So they're like, kama ujaikwa na mtoto mgonjwa, kama ujaikwa na hi na hi na hi, you wouldn't really understand the importance of that community yes. and that merry-go-round chama. These people, these things come through. Good. Um, some of them also said it's because of discipline. So you see, like, and I told them, you people have actually answered my question for me. I said that merry-go-round chamas do not make sense financially, but they do make sense socially. And we are not saying one is more important than they are, mm. than the other. So as much as you have your merry-go-round chama for socializing yes. and community and for you to teach yourself discipline, you see, it's forced discipline. It's I struggle to save out of my own volition. Mm. So let me join a chama where I'll be forced to contribute, right? So again, circles. Why? So I'm, I'm exploring why do we do circles, for example. Yeah. I love circles mm. and I'm in a circle. Mm -hmm. And circles, and I love to tell people this, circles are primarily for credit facilities. Your dividend or your bonus comes as an added benefit. But if I was never planning to take a loan from a circle at any given point in time, I would not be in a circle for saving purposes. Mm. Because the interest, again, that you're getting from circle savings you could get better yes. elsewhere. Mm -hmm. So I'm in a circle, right? Um, and I would never be in a circle if I wasn't planning to I'm take a, a loan. loan from it. Do you know what they're doing with your money when you're not taking loans? Mm -mm. They're loaning it to us and to other people. So again, it's the same concept with a bank. Your money is being put to work by other people. Remember, Lynn, for basic foundation if people forget everything I've said today. Money that is here in your pocket, in your mattress, in your bank account, it's 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 not valuable. Money is not valuable to you when it's seated there. Yeah. Money is valuable when it's working for you. So how does money work for you? Money works for you by earning you more ma money. more money. So I'm in a circle because I know that I do not want to expose myself to some of the predatory lending services that some banks will offer mm -hmm. because I will go to a bank and get an unsecured loan yes. and pay 16 or 17 percent. Mm -hmm. If I'm in a circle, I know Lynn, I know Jerry, I know Joro, I know John. They sign for me. It's still unsecured. I've not given a title deed or a logbook. Maybe I don't even have any, yeah. but I'll get a loan for 9 percent. But the problem is I won't get one because you've not paid and I guaranteed you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, so and, if I guarantee mm -hmm, you, exactly. see, you are here. Scholar needs to guarantee you. Muga needs to guarantee you. Dama needs to guarantee mm, you, right? Mm. Then you, you take the loan. They and you can't don't take care. it yeah. and they can't even withdraw their whatever mm. until you, until you, pay. you pay. Which is and one of the reasons. And some people run away. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons why you should not be in a circle. Again, I'll repeat. If you're also not taking advantage of that credit facility. Do you know what I did when I wanted to join a chama? Mm. I mean, sorry, a circle. I, I, I will never sign for a stranger alone. That much I can tell you. And I don't recommend it. Yes. And by a stranger, I mean, ni mtutu mnapata nanga. Ama mse tuwa job. Mm. 
I talked to my closest friends. I'm like, nabedo na kwanga kwa sako. This is someone I know. I know where you live. I probably know your husband. I I even know maybe we've even never been to your mm. up country. Close. We are close. So I convinced five of my close friends to join the same circle as I. So by the time my friend is coming to tell me, Suzy, unaweza ni sign a loan. Unaona hata before niambia ni ya nini? Najua ni ya nini. We are that close. Mm. So I know she's building for her mother. Mm. Or I know they want to buy a car because they are getting a baby. Or you know, because we are that close. We are we, we have not all of a sudden become close because I need a signature. Mm-hmm. We are close. Good. You get? That's number one. Number two, there's also the aspect of, uh, I think people really ignore people's small, small money behaviors. Let me tell you something, Lynn. There's a friend I have that will borrow me 200,000. And without contracts or anything, you I will give immediately them. give that person. And there's a friend that will borrow me 100, Bob. And tell me, nita kurudishia. Na mista mpea. Tuandikania. And I'll te- ata tutandikania, sita kupea. Yeah. And I'll tell you why. The small money behaviors of someone will tell you how they will behave with big money. I've had people borrow, and I'm not saying a hundred bob is a big deal, but I'd rather you borrow me a hundred bob and tell me, nipe tu so, usinembu tanirudishia. Nipe tu. Nipe tu so, nikupe, nikijua, it's not coming back. Have your parents ever told you to lend them money wata kurudisha? That is another thing. <laughs> That's another thing and I think it's also with black. I've always said I give money, especially when it comes to family. Mm-hmm. I give money that I'm not expecting. Me too. Back. Me too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't... Uh, yeah, I know. I know. It, it, you know it's not coming back, it's right? It's not. <laughs> so, wo kifanya ka budget kako unapangia tile 20k mama yako atakulipa. Mm. It's, it's not happening. Yes. Which is why, for me, sometimes someone will even borrow me 20k, a family member. And I'll say, um, sina 20, but niko na 5. Ama 4. Ita kusaidia yo? Eh, unajua kwa nini mesema ntampea yo 4? Because ata sporudisha. You are good. It is not catastrophic as 20k that mm. you've not return, mm. returned. So back to your circle. So circles are very, again, for me the only reason I'm in one is because I know that for some capital intensive projects like Shamba, Kujenga, Kujenga. or something else, I will need a loan. And mm-hmm. I don't want to pay 18% to a bank. I want to get away with paying 12, 13. But Uzuria nowadays, now if you do not have a community um, of friends that you can join the same circle with, then you can also join a circle because nowadays they allow self-guaranteeing. Mm. Now you guarantee yourself against your own savings yes. or however they will allow you to self-guarantee. Guarantee. But never sign for a stranger and never ask a stranger to sign for you and simply don't join a circle if the intentions and are not and simply don't join a circle if you do will never utilize the credit facilities because the saving return you're getting you could get better elsewhere like for example in a money market fund so if you just want to save there are better avenues than a circle mm. so i why am i why am i in a circle because at some point i foresee i will need Credit, Credit facility. So what am I saying, Lynn? Everything has a purpose. I always tell people, banks are for transaction purposes. Okay? And maybe if you want to take credit from them, then building your credit history mm-hmm. with that ba- mm-hmm. bank. Circles are for credit faci- facilities. Yeah? Merry go rounds for the people who still choose to stay in them. Stay while knowing you are doing it for social purposes, not financial yes. progress purposes. Or the fact that like you're doing it to develop your discipline, mm. you're doing it to have a circle, like you, you are, you're doing it for social capital, but you're not doing it to become wealthy. A circle will not make you wealthy. Mm. It's just the reality. It's sad. But, but I mean, I mean, sorry, a charmer, um, it, it, won't, it won't, right? Yeah. Um, money market funds are for short term. So I always say, people, there are three very important purposes of an MMF. If someone is like, okay, fine, I open an MMF, what and is it what? for? Three important reasons. Number one, your emergency fund, okay? You want to put your money. So I started my emergency fund in 2021. Now it's 2024. By the grace of God, I've never had to withdraw from that account. The one I'm telling you has money that can last me mm, nine, nine months. months. Imagine kama yo pesenge kwa kwa bank. 
I'd have lost the interest I've been earning yeah. per month compounded True. for three years. True. Which is why I always tell people, because in an MMF nowadays you can withdraw within 24 to 48 hours. If I had an emergency, ata naeza kakopa alafu yo pesa by the time if could the cash or ni me withdraw nili, nilipe. So your emergency fund should be in a money market fund. The second one, I call this sinking funds. And people always ask me, what's a sinking fund? A sinking fund is just a goal-based savings account. If you're a parent, one of the most important sinking funds you need to have is a children's sinking fund. So your kids need school fees. They need uniform. Yes. They outgrow their clothes in two weeks. Their shoes. <laughs> so you need to have an account where you and your spouse, or if, you're, mm. if you do not do finances together, it's still okay, where you put money every month for as and when these things ar yeah. arise. Mm -hmm. You can also have a travel sinking fund. Maybe, Lynn, you like traveling. Yes, I do. In Mm, okay, okay. Now Lisa Frank. So you're like, I need to go to Zanzibar next year, or I want to take a Euro trip yes. next year. And it's just personal spend, right? You uh, you're like, okay, I have eight months to my Euro trip. I need four thousand dollars for this, or however much you need. Mm. You put kidogo kidogo every Every, every month, month. And, you, and then you travel sinking funds allow you to spend guilt free yes let's say you like perfumes handbags let's say your sinking fund can literally be for anything so like for me i have two sinking funds i have one i call my lifestyle mm -hmm. sinking fund so that's the account i save for my lifestyle needs yes when i need to buy an air fryer when I need to nini my fridge, hey. when I need to, uh, it's my spouse's birthday, yeah. instead of kwanza kupanic, as in surely, birthday inaku, inaku wanga, in si, ni kama birthday ya Jesus, yeah. surely, yeah. 25th December, December of every year, but who are Kenyans? <laughs> Kwa Kenyans. <laughs> Loan, yeah. mshara yote ya December. Kila it's kitu. like it's a surprise. Uh, and imagine Christmas is 25th December of tu. every yeah. year. Without fail. fail. So let me give you a good example. Yeah. If today you opened a Christmas sinking fund, Lynn, you decide you'll be putting 2K every month, January to December. At In December, you'll have a whooping 24,000. No, 2K, yes, 24. Yeah, 24,000 that you will spend guilt-free without touching your salary. Ay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good example yes. of a sinking fund. Yeah. If you put 3,000, you'll have a whooping 36,000. 36, Yaku. Una chop two pesa. Yes. So sometimes I, I I usually tell people, smart people you'll see them spending money. You you're thinking they're spending their salary. That person has saved for that December trip for the whole year. That's a sinking fund. That person is doing their uh, uh, these people who splurge on their daughter's or son's birthdays. You're wondering, hey, what do Kenya to a pesa wapi? Maybe that person has saved since the last birthday in July. Mm -hmm. They started saving in August until July again. They withdrew money from that account. They splurge an Instagram worthy birthday. Yes. You understand? So it's about, so like for me, I have that lifestyle sinking fund and I also have an insurance oh, sinking okay. fund. So that one is because I'm self-employed. There are things that my employer used to give me, but that, that unfortunately, I, I must now start thinking of giving myself like medical insurance mm. yeah so mine i usually renew it in december so as of january nishanza kusevia yeah? december. december so that when my cover is due you are good i'm good that's a oh. good example of a sinking fund yes that's what money ma that's why we have money market funds and i'm very aware that this nine percent ten percent i'm getting in my mmf is not going to make me the next bill gates mm. which mm. is why i have a third money market fund now yeah. for saving for investments wow so now i'm putting whatever extra now i have left 2k 5k 10k sometimes on a good month you'll get 20 50 however much put i put there the day an investment opportunity pre presents itself lean i am not wondering that our people say in the investment you are sorted. i've been accumulating something small yes. even if i don't know where exactly i'll put, put, put it. it so let's tell people if you want to start an investment journey the first thing that you need to do is invest in financial literacy why because you shouldn't invest in things you don't understand but then number two as a way of uh, i don't like using this word manifest in march but like as a way of planning let me say planning. manifesting <laughs> as a way of manifesting 
unajua mbona sipendi unajua mbona spendi manifesting nikiongelea finance ni kwa sababu when it comes to money hope is not a strategy we assume it will mana from heaven hope is not a strategy it is it's not so eh jamani yani wewe unaishi huko nje ka rihana una una unaenda out alafu una manifest as in I'm like what are you manifesting if you're not saving and investing <laughs> you know you you don't you don't know where your money goes yes. you're not tracking your expenses you're not you don't even know where you're losing money or where you're bleeding yes, money yes. but you're manifesting what are you manifesting what are you manifesting saka hope ketu kameenda imeenda hope is not a strategy and I'm a believer let me tell you yes. i pray to god but i wake up every day and do what i'm supposed to mm-hmm. do i track my expenses i am working to increase my sources of income i am learning different investments i am checking my discipline yes. i'm checking um there's a time i i said something that also pissed people off um in my observing uh, because i coach monday to monday yeah. on a day to day basis i came to a conclusion that nairobi is a city full of broke people trying to in press other broke people or trying to show other broke people that they are not broke who is broker who is broker <laughs> so like if mm-hmm. if and i learned if we were all being very honest with ourselves yes. and we lived within our means some of us would not drive the cars we drive if some of us were being honest with ourselves we would not live the in the houses, houses we, we do in. our children will not would not be going to the schools that we we, we are in. struggling so much to to afford and i'm not saying there's anything wrong with giving good quality whatever to your um family or to your children yes. but most of us are just doing it because lin is doing it because my sister watoto wa sister wangu anaenda hapa so wangu hawaizi enda when you know damn well you can't afford it right so we are living a life we can't afford and that's why you see this concept of saving this concept of investing this concept of wealth creation it's never going to make sense mm. to us mm. because as long as you're living i always tell people living below your means now increases your means for the future tukufanyia mic drop it just That's increases cool. yeah it increases, it increases your, your means for, for the future, future. And as long as you're living like if you live above your means today please no matter how much you pray no matter how much you manifest you will constantly live paycheck to paycheck and you will retire poor having had a high flying career earning six figures seven figures as i said earlier on the issue is not how much money we are making it's how much money we are retaining because what is wealth wealth is what is left after you've spent yes So I'm spending on expensive cars, expensive houses, expensive schools, expensive clothes, expensive makeup and I'm posting for you to see on social media. So you guys are like, "Hey, Suzie na kwanga na do, Lina na kwanga na do. Hiyo si wealth. Hiyo ni kenye nime spend. Wealth ni what have I left after I have proved to you that I can drive that car. Wealth is what I have left after I've proved to you that my kids can go to that and such a school. Yes. Wealth is what I have left after I have the iPhones, the MacBooks, the whatever, all that. After I've impressed you on social media, what I have left now after all that is done is what my wealth is. So how much are we retaining? Beautiful. After impressing. So mm-hmm. I always tell people, I'm broke most times because as i told you me i'm dealing with a serious case of poverty so um i'm still dealing with a lot of black tax even as we speak right now um still dealing with empowering some people back at home because things have to change for you to resolve a generational poverty issue things have to change but i've i've always told people being broke after impressing is not the same as being broke after investing it's it's not the same we need that book which one been broke oh. <laughs> after impressing is not the same yeah so yes. sometimes it's cuz nime fund you know i have so many to accounts emergency fund sinking fund i'm trying to figure to ensure i have medical cover because most african families are one illness away from a crisis you know once i've done all of this and i've paid my bills lean I don't have much for impressing mm, mm. which is one of the reasons me I meet people in town you know uh, you have a big social media platform yes. so I think you can agree I think people assume that when you have 100,000 followers it's like our followers and akupea bob 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 so you have a 100,000 you know so sometimes I even meet people in Dubai me I'm walking in toy I'm just minding my business and it's like guys are so shocked that we see you on social media what are you doing here mm-hmm. 
Me that has never been. I'm available. not interested in impressing. Do you know I buy earrings in Dubois mm-hmm. to date. Mm-hmm. One day I'll probably walk into Swarovski yes. and gift myself something nice. Yes. And the truth of the matter is as we sit right now, I know there's an account I can tap to and, and go remove to Swar- money and, and go Good. to Swarovski. Yes. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but again, priorities. So again I always say when you're guided by your own personal values and you don't do things with money to impress you start seeing progress for me money and the most important question i tell my clients to ask themselves is what does financial freedom look like to me okay. before you even start the journey let's assume you're listening to us right now you're in debt you probably do not have a very good source of income like you unanza zero fired. you just got fired you are the merry go round chama people who are mad at me let's yeah, just uh, let's just assume you're starting there just ask yourself what would i want my money to do for me or what does financial freedom look like to me if you can define that for me i defined it as dignity because i yeah. grew up with a lack of dignity so what does dignity look like for me dignity for me looks like not losing my job lean and having to go to borrow rent or my landlord locking my house so i'll do everything financially possible to ensure that that situation is mitigated for as long as possible mm-hmm, mm-hmm. dignity looks like me being able to handle like a small illness there are big illnesses where no matter how rich you are to take a pay bill right but there are small illnesses that i want to be able to deal with i can handle it i can handle without it being public business mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you get Good. for me dignity is not complaining about black tax my whole life only for me to put my children through the same black, black tax. tax. So where I'm putting my money, I've decided what my values are. Dignity. Um for me it is also time freedom. I'm here today seated on a Tuesday, yes. right? For example, and um I have that freedom. Why? Because I've also created a system around my finances, my business where if I want to take a mental health break you can. even for a month from my business, I can. Beautiful. If I want to travel, you can. I can move things around to travel because life is not just about like you were born, you were married, you got children, you worked, you died. It's much more. So for me quality of life is important. Now, sometimes I'm looking at things I'm like, so I I I'm compromising between daily takeout kfc and what not and i'm like if i can save this money that is going to enjoyment pombe and what not i can afford a holiday for my kids mm. in december mm. God. you know so it's about i call it value based spending don't spend based on what instagram says is cool instagram says it's you must have this kind of phone who who died and made that the rule mm-hmm. Nobody. You know, Instagram says you ma- your children must go to Montessori system or it? international mini lender resembo primary school. I went to public schools my whole life Pangani girls and then I went to KU. KU. I think I've turned out pretty good. Pretty okay. It's good. So if if I was in a situation where I'm in debt because I'm unable to afford Montessori system, I'd find a reasonably decent school for example for my child to go yeah you if you can afford the international system do it, do it. what i'm just saying is that value based spending is about identifying what is so important what is the most important thing to mm. you and then spending mm. and as ramit sethi likes to say mercilessly cut down on spending on things that don't mean anything to you So a lot of us we are spending again as I said this the problem again I have with this social gatherings mm. is that you're just there for society but it's not serving and on Instagram post. Yeah and uh, yeah it's not serving you so figure out so why do I why must I drive a XX whatever car why must I always show up for the girls hangouts every Friday why must I always have a brazilian wig is it really because you want to or is it because that is what has been sold as that's what's acceptable mm. so for me I've, and that's why for me most I, i i always tell people i don't think i'm the most fashionable person i drive a very low cc car i'm not interested in like any finance coach so lazima tokeleze na range rover nikiweza ku afford you will i'll buy 
but i'm telling you me i'll come with my cardimio here and we are good and i'm good like my car is from point a to point See. b the day i'm able to get more and i can afford more and why yeah you are and still more. service whatever i had determined are my prior mm. priorities then we are good so i'm not saying there's anything wrong with like a luxury flashy lifestyle yeah. etc but a lot of us are doing that at the expense of our financial future and our financial security but mm. then we are saying saving is hard yes. investing is hard i've always told people if you have money to party at least 5000 every friday you have enough to build wealth in Beautiful. 20 years may have a book title for you which one broke impressing <laughs> or investing by <laughs> so then amen yeah. i'm going to claim no, it honestly like mm. honestly that's like my ch- even when you mentioning about the car even for me when it came to like choosing a car i yeah. know why i have the car i have right now yeah. like i had to go through a check like can, this 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 mm. this 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 off road mm. this and this and this and this mm. and this but kitambo you are just like oh, i want a range rover i want this and this yeah. and this and this the pressure is a lot why cuz that's here. what everyone here cuz that's what how everyone has and you know also yeah. assuming this knowledge mm. is like everyone knows <laughs> i didn't even know kwanza treasure bills na bonds na is aboeka niende niwambie nirudishie no you can't um so oh, that's you no. so for the bills yeah. because they are very short term it's either 91 Yes. 182 or 364. Uh-huh. So once you lock your money for the 91 days That's you it. have to to wait. And if knock on the wood I die. Mm. Is there like a next of kin? Mm, yeah 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 you can always put like for most investments you can put a next of kin. Mm-hmm. Um but then now this is probably a topic for another day but like it's very important again africans we do not like this conversation of estate planning and wills it's uh, a part uh, of financial can i have you can i have you for that <laughs> yes, for our please. next topic why not let me do that for yeah, our next so topic because planning... it's something i've wanted yeah. to do do you know i'm 29 and i actually have a will and i do not i i do not i am not anyone's mother yet but you know why you know i have dependents I've seen I've worked with clients and I've seen people because young people now are making money. I actually have a client I'm, I'm working with. She works at Microsoft and she's very she did so well because she also went to Harvard. Yeah. This a Kenyan babe who got a scholarship went to Harvard came back now she works for like Microsoft mm-hmm. and she earns around 4000 USD monthly. And she has no husband, no kids etc right so this is money there are some young people that are really making money right if that babe died today and no one knows where their money is okay so if me that conversation for our next show because yeah. i'm gonna have mm. i'm gonna have to right. have you so, so if you have what you're asking if you have mm. dependents mm. like why do i have a will right now is because um if i die today and people don't know where my money is the people i support will suffer so my money will go to what are they calling them the um, unreserved the unclaimed funds mm. with the government mm. yet if i had something simple indicating ata kama tuko na mmf peke na sako what if that sako has 900000 or the mmf has 1. whatever that's money that can help somewhere mm. even in your absence yeah right so it's uh, financial planning for me it's very important you need to find a way to um understand financial planning but like i've always told people financial planning is not where it ends if we want to become if we, you want your children to be trust fund babies if, you, if we want to undo what has been because what has been is we pass down poverty from mm. one generation to mm, another. another so if you want to pass down wealth from one generation to another um and that's why i've started practicing even before i get mm. dep- uh, like actual children right um is you now have to understand that financial planning is not enough you have to protect your portfolio so financial protection is also something that you actually it's a it's a spectrum yes. legacy planning now comes after and then you see most people would assume at study what are you legacy planning my small peanuts because if you don't plan for what that money will do the government will make a decision mm-hmm. for you there's already a will yes. if you don't have a will there's a will in place for you through the government so what will you teach us next time because <laughs> you said it's not the end it's yeah, just yeah, the yeah. beginning yeah. so what do we get to learn next time i mean definitely we can talk about now the journey to wealth creation mm-hmm. because i think today we've really focused on like the basics and yes. the foundation which yes. is very important when things get too complicated i've always told people go back to the basics understand why why are we saving why not save in these places which i think we've tried to mm-hmm. answer today mm-hmm. um but wealth creation is something that and i think that with 
low income earners which majority of Kenyans are unfortunately um it's something that we feel is not within our mm-hmm. reach but again we can invest with as little as a thousand bob okay. we can invest with as little as 5000 bob mm-hmm. as long as you can invest your, you've already started wealth creation. creation so we can focus on that aspect of wealth creation and also now wealth protection yes um what are you leaving behind what are you passing down and most people think oh what if i'm going to be child free i don't have um a family like for me i don't have children yet yes. now yeah. but i have dependents which is why i must think if i dropped dead right now what would happen? all this money i've been working so hard for mm. will it where will it go how will it be distributed oh, god yeah you are so good at this i gotta say oh you are those people who shrink when they are given a company <laughs> here we force you to take you your flowers <laughs> you are so yeah. you are so good at this thank you like for the first time today nimiskia oh Trisha, like i understand Mm. like i feel like and i always say i if i'm feeling this i know me and my people we are feeling it together mm. i feel like at least i've comprehended a couple of things yeah. that i didn't know cuz the mistake is to assume everyone knows mm. these things we don't yeah, know if don't. i knew that circle oh my god i should have seen how upset i was like <laughs> you need just tell hey. me you need like, tell me which circle oh this is at the end of our show today i was like ah tell me too so what two? with with growing terms <laughs> nini ni wa am sijui two months one i'm mm. like no no which other one kuna ya two weeks lakini utakatwa haya kata just send me my money after my money back just give me my money after <laughs> drinks man i was upset <laughs> i was so upset that you see you. i didn't know why yeah. i didn't even know the interest rate is low though that interest rate is no man not i'm not doing this thing yeah. like but you see i also didn't know mm. like circles are actually good if you intend on taking a loan, loan. they actually yeah. good. but if you don't if it's just saving get out please just uh, put your money to better use like yes. i wish i had hours to just tell like the opportunities and i'm able to touch some for like us. i mean like for example you know money market funds for instance mm. they just fall under they they're, they're not the only ones they fall under an umbrella you understand okay so the umbrella is called unit trusts okay and a unit trust we have four types of funds the one that is the most common is your money market fund because mm-hmm. it's low risk um and very accessible But then we also have something called the fixed income fund or what most people will call the bond fund. This is a way for a low income earner who doesn't have 100,000 to invest in bonds but has 5,000 mm. to spare every month to grow that money yeah. because this money in a bond fund is invested in bonds but most of them like I know CIC will allow you to invest with as little as 5,000 in their bond fund. Mm-hmm. Um it's 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 very accessible then we have the equity fund this one exposes your money to the stock market so you may not know whether to buy safaricom shares kcb shares whether it's working or not but you can pull your money somewhere where mm-hmm. experts are investing on your behalf yeah. again still as uh, accessible with as little as 5000 and then we have what we call like a balanced fund a balanced fund is a balanced portfolio it has a mix of low risk investments like treasury bills and bonds and high risk investments mm-hmm. like the stock market right This for accounts you can invest with as little as 5000. And yet we are here feeling what if I just earn 50k? Where we like you know we we don't because of that lack of financial literacy, we don't understand that right under our noses. That's what working in, in an investment firm exposed me to. Right under our noses are investment opportunities that do not require even that 50k you're mm-hmm. thinking that you don't have that's why you're not in there. investing so many of us are putting even up to 15 20000 in amerigo round chama i can show you exactly what that 20000 can do you can do for you in somewhere where you're getting a, a better interest rate 11 12% 13 even right um and then extrapolate that over four years even as a finance student and i did economics and finance no one taught me how to invest what even a portfolio i used to hear the word portfolio i'm wondering mean kwa nadani portfolio ni kitu kubwa na portfolio too is just a mix like if you have land in nanyuki and you have a money market fund and you have a circle you have a port that's a portfolio it's just a, <laughs> a group of investments you know so our education system has not taught us that um and a lot of us we are expected to just graduate get a good job and figure out how to do it i i, I think we need to have the humility to accept 
that there's somewhere our education system failed us. So I always tell people, there's no shame in not knowing. Absolutely no shame mm -hmm. in not knowing what a bill, bond, whatever, all those things are. There's no shame in you not being able to budget or you not mm -hmm. being able to choose the best loan providers. What we need to do is the same way we invest in um, hair, nails, whatever, whatever makes you happy, you need to invest in financial literacy because money affects pretty much so many things in our lives for us to walk around not knowing what to do with it. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So because our education system did not teach us that, yes. you go out of your way. Mm. I've always said, before you invest in the stock market, learn how the stock market works, what it is. Before you put your 100,000 and put it in a bill or a bond, learn what it is. Before, not Before after, learn. not after, yeah, most of us when we've you been banned. You can say circles, it's okay. <laughs> I don't want to come for you. Uneza, you can say it. You can say it. You can say So you want to first of all learn. learn. Most of us are getting our hands burned and then we're like, oh, awa wali nibia, wali nifanya, wali nifanya. I was like that. But you see, it's just, you didn't understand. True story. They are actually not stealing from you. I just didn't know. Yeah, you get, so once, if we can, I, I always tell people an investment in education will always pay you the best return. Mm. So start, watch out after returns, at where will I make the most money? Apana, invest in education. As an educated, as a financially literate person, mm -hmm. you'll, you'll never be conned. You won't put your money in the wrong places. You will, you will make maximum use of what you have. Mm -hmm. You get, so for me, I've always, and because I've also worked with very high net worth clients and I've worked with low income earners, I came to understand it's not about how much money you earn. It's about what you do with what you have. Because you see, you can have someone who's earning 120,000, but out of that 120,000, they are saving 20. That person is better off than someone who's earning 500,000 that does not save anything. Mm. And okay. believe me, Lynn, there are people who earn six figures, but they don't save anything. Mm. All of it is in there. Yes. It's in the conveyor belt for car loans, mortgage loans, etc. By the time someone is done servicing that lifestyle they put themselves because they earn 500,000, they have nothing. Mm -hmm. This person who earns 120 is wealthier than that 500k True. person. Because remember, wealth is what you retain, mm -hmm. not what you spend. Mm -hmm. So just invest first of all in the literacy. If you can understand, um, it, 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 a journey that would have taken you 10 years can take you four, can take you five. Because mm. like for me, I had literacy. I just needed to solve my income problem. Yes. The moment I solved my income problem, I now have an emergency fund. I have stocks, I have bonds, I have bills. I'm investing in Uja foreign markets. Stocks. <laughs> stocks. Stocks. Ama to chukue next time. Stocks ah, ziko kwa wealth creation. Ziko kwa wealth. Yeah. Hey, we got to yeah. touch on stocks. Yeah. I had that. So you, 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 can, yeah. you can do a lot in four years. Like yes. what I've done since... Because I started with zero, zero investments and a lot of debt, zero savings, you know, and I've been able to work my way to getting different assets, Beautiful. including even thinking about luxuries like a health insurance yes. or buying a car. I never even thought that was accessible to me. And it's not because Lynn, today as we speak, there's no one who has ever given me even a 500k check. Mm. I've never made that much in lump sum. But it's the little that I make here with coaching, content creation, speaking engagements, da 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 da. And but because I'm smart with how my money is coming in and where it's going, four years down the line, I I have an impressive mm. investment portfolio. Not because I touched a lot of money, but because the little I had, I've I've focused more on my wealth creation because I know what poverty is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So like I'm okay with living a, in a decent house. I'm okay driving a decent car. I'm okay not being the most fashionable yes. person. Yeah. You're okay wearing black every day. I'm okay wearing <laughs> black every day. Um, but tunaweza, tunaweza go to 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 kifungwe is your yes. investment account. Yes. So uh, for me, um, the goal is not to look wealthy. It's to be wealthy. Hey, another mic drop. Susan, thank you so much. But anyways, people, I know before first I let you go, do you
do you have anything you want to add and also i know there are a lot of people who are watching you yes guys i'm gonna have her back next time i know you want to hear from her i want to hear from her too but there are a lot of people who are watching and they're like mm -hmm. how can they even find you those yeah. people who are already i have a hundred k i need <laughs> help with this yeah. you know okay. so how can they find because yeah. i would love mm -hmm. this is not an ad you've not paid me to say this but i would love if my people came yeah. to talk to you um so susan wanjiko everywhere on yeah. social media yeah. so i have a youtube channel mm -hmm. susan wanjiko mm -hmm. In fact, you see these investments I'm talking about, I give this information for free wow. on my YouTube channel. So I've talked about all this, most of these investments I mentioned mm -hmm. here today. Um, also on Instagram, Susan Wanjiko, also a personal finance platform. Yeah. Um, LinkedIn, Susan Wanjiko, <laughs> it's just Susan Wanjiko everywhere. Yeah. My company is the Legacy Hub Kenya. So as long as you have access to any of my social media platforms, on my be. bio, there's the Legacy Hub Kenya website mm -hmm. where we offer group coaching. We coach chamas, we coach um, companies, we coach individuals. Yeah. I work even with families. Um, so you can also find the services. You won't have to DM for prices. Mm -hmm. All my prices are on my website. Good. Exactly. So that's where to find me. Beautiful. Yeah. And thank you so much for having me. Man, I've had fun. Not just fun, like, hey, <laughs> is money really fun? <laughs> no, because I don't have now to make noise to circles uh, and to stuff. Circles, like, yeah. I understand mm. that literacy, understand, no research, learn, no, yeah. you know, and you know, we have to come to, we, you know, an understanding, and it's okay to admit we as Africans right now, it's when we are learning about financial freedom, it's when people are actually investing in financial mm. literacy. So mm. there is no shame in knowing. I did no I but catch know. me dead in that circle again yeah now, like now I, you know now i know and you when know, you know better you, you do, do better. better you know yeah so thank you i've really had an amazing time having okay. you edwin thank you for an amazing episode i know he was like be here on time <laughs> <laughs> that's what he told I you i hope i didn't disappoint <laughs> did she disappoint you you feel good <laughs> yeah it's been a beautiful episode mm -hmm. and i know our audience are going to learn a lot from you and you You've said you're coming back yes so i'm gonna hold that hold me to account i will to account yeah i'm gonna hold you to account because i know they are que obviously from the comment section and the feedback they give us i know there are a lot of things that they might want to learn and mm. who else you are so good thank you and that book please Hey, Lynn. Broke, Amen. Broke impressing or <laughs> investing? Me, I'm telling you. Hapa alafu peleke pale nuria. See, see, we are diversifying our income yeah. stream. So yeah. that's one yeah. thing. But anyway, yeah. when you when you are ready, yeah? mm. when you are ready, ah, what a show, guys. Just call me, Lynn. Sana, muga ukopoa. Dama, you're good. Mm. All right, that's it for me, guys. Tap Tap Send is the official sponsor of today's conversation. Send money with them. The details are on your screen. And also let me know what's your take home from today's conversation. Connect with our guest. Her social media handles are pinned on the comment section and also showing on your screen. See you guys tomorrow at 10 a.m. Bye.